happy with the defensive effort against Notre Dame on their last time out. So they want to make sure that they clean that up. Of course, defense is the calling card here in Charlottesville. Notre Dame shot 70% from the floor in the first half last time out against a Virginia defense that is historically significant. Just underway, Louisville with the basketball first. Here comes Tyler Johnson at the point, number four in black. Feed it inside to Brandon Huntley Hatfield, and he starts quickly. A young man with three consecutive double doubles has the first two points tonight. Brandon Huntley Hatfield has been spectacular for the Cards as of late, averaging over 18 points and over 11 rebounds, as you mentioned, the last three games, and is starting to become a focal point of this offense. And you see Kenny Payne wanting to get the ball inside to him early. Well, Huntley Hatfield. Spent his first year at uh, Tennessee, and he has talked openly about the fact that as somebody who was young when he got there, a young 18, he battled confidence issues and trying to play grown men in the SEC is tough for anybody, let alone an 18-year-old, and he is still working on that, and it's a process with Kenny Payne. UVA has its first two on the shot by Jake Groves. Keep an eye on Mike James, who's limping down the floor. Ron Gruber having a conversation with him, making sure that he is able to keep going. And Louisville can not afford to lose anybody else. We know for sure only seven scholarship players available for the Cardinals tonight. There may be a little more leeway on that. Triple by Sky Clark from the corner, 5-2 Louisville. Louisville very well prepared for the double team as Hundley to dribbles out and finds Jovanovic coming down the lane with a nice kick to Scott Clark for the corner three ball. Yeah, Donalo Jovanovic making his first career start for Trey White, who yesterday at practice tweaked his groin. And during shoot-around earlier today, he was unable to participate. They had still held out hope that maybe he'd be able to play tonight, but he is among those not available, at least at the moment, for Louisville. And J.J. Trainer did make the trip. But he did not do much during shoot-around either. And he is dressed. Significant loss for the Cards when you think about the experience that they have. The majority of it is with a guy like J.J. Trainers in his fourth year in the program. And we're not likely to see Emmanuel Okorafor off the turnover. Here comes Dunn. Can he track down the ball and save it? He does. Reestablishes back on this side of the baseline. And UVA sets up. Catch and release. Andrew Rohde for three. Good sign for the Hoos early. Andrew Rohde taking that shot early in the shot clock, however, confidently stepping up and knocking down a big three. And he's just a tad under 30% on the year. Shooting has been an issue for UVA outside of Isaac McNeely and Jake Groves. Johnson spotting up. A little strong. Huntley Hatfield got... A hand on the ball, but it comes to Virginia. Brody skips it back out to Beekman. McNeely being hounded by Clark. Good drive by Johnson to set up the open look, but Mike James missed it badly. Both these teams try to settle in a great start offensively. Now the defense has started to pick up a little bit over the last couple possessions. This is where you look for Reese Beekman to make a play for Virginia, trying to crack that paint and create a shot for one of his teammates. He is the ACC leader in assists, five and a half per game. Into the lane, puts it up, and in. Virginia on top seven. Five. Go my favorite route and create a shot for himself. <laughs> I like that even more. Reese Beekman, as Tony Bennett told us pregame, Trying to find that balance between being a facilitator and a scorer. And on that one, takes it upon his own shoulders to get a bucket. Yeah, averaging over 13 points per game. How is he doing with that balance this year, having a bigger role, Corey? I believe he's doing a great job with that balance. The difference is teams recognize how important he is to the success of the Virginia Cavaliers. So therefore, oftentimes he's playing against double teams. They're trapping him, doing whatever they can to get the basketball out of his hands, forcing someone else to make a play. So much on his plate this year for last year's ACC Defensive Player of the Year. Shot clock down to six. To the corner, Yovanovich. 
Good box out by Jack Rose. Such a good box out that the Virginia bench is standing up applauding the box out. Recognizing, of course, taking care of your defensive boards is so important for the Hoos. Jake Groves, the uh, grad transfer from Oklahoma. Rody out to Groves, off the back iron. James with a good box out at this end to keep Dunn away from the glass. And it appears Mike James is doing okay with his gate, watching him get through these first five minutes of the ball game. Foul on the penetration. It's going to go against McNeely. And that takes us to our first media timeout. Five minutes in, the Who's up by two. Behind Tony Bennett, we're the radio analyst for the Who's alongside my partner then, Dave Kane, who's now with the Milwaukee Bucks. And thinking back to that time where JPJ wasn't full. No. And Virginia was getting booed going into the halftime locker room after only scoring 15 points against Iowa State on December the 30th of 2010. And you find yourself wondering what would have happened if the Virginia athletic department, the Virginia fans, had treated him in a manner as to which I'm seeing is happening with Kenny Payne right now. Virginia would not have a national championship. They would not have a coach on the cusp of being a Hall of Famer moving forward. So I would like to employ the Louisville Cardinal faithful to have a little patience with my guy Kenny Payne over there. I believe he's going to get this program headed in the right direction. Rody misses the three. Offensive rebound for Virginia. Beekman always looking for somebody. Tane Murray this time off the bench for Virginia. Picked up his dribble in a tough spot. Beekman pulls up. Give him four early points. It's a four-point Virginia lead. But Corey, it's 15 years later. The world of college basketball is a different place. Plus, the fans in Louisville are more accustomed to winning at such a high level than the Virginia fans were 15 years ago. So it's isn't it apples and oranges? It's been a long time since the Louisville fans have been accustomed to winning. If you go back and you think about once Rick Pitino exited the building, the Louisville Cardinal fans have not been used to winning. And so when Kenny Payne took over this program, he made it very clear that the program was broken. It needed to be fixed. And when you're dealing with one of your own, as Kenny Payne is, of course, national champion at the University of Louisville, you also have to understand that there are many recruits watching. How do you treat your own? And that is a big thing moving forward because I can tell you for certain as we see Tane Murray coming off the screen knocking down a big three ball, there are elite high school basketball players waiting to see how this goes with Kenny Payne to whether they sign up to play for the cards or they move elsewhere. And when you say one of your own, of course, Kenny Payne was a terrific basketball player at Louisville, was a freshman on Denny Crum's national championship team in 1980 and was a first round draft pick. Played a number of years in the NBA and it has not gone the way they would have liked. A 9 and 35 record as head coach at his alma mater. Sky Clark buries the three. But I can tell you also, when the gym was half full back in 2010, 2011, it wasn't going the way that Virginia fans wanted it to go either. There was no embrace the pace as we see Blake Buchanan off the beautiful dime from Reese Beekman, finishing it off the first time Buchanan has scored in the last four games. So an encouraging sign for the first year. Yeah, I asked uh, Tony Bennett before the game, what's different now for Blake Buchanan than the first time I saw him in the Florida game in Charlotte way back in November when he was so good. And it just sounds like it's the usual course for freshmen. That's it. Confidence. That's what it is. And as a, as a freshman, you're going to be up and down. You're going to have those ebbs, those flows. And Tony Bennett knows that. They made the commitment this summer. They were going to give younger players a try. They were not going to go out and, I mean, they brought in some transfers. However, they're going to give Blake Buchanan an opportunity to play. Elijah Gertrude, who's checking in, he will get an opportunity. Leon Bond, who's checking in, he will get an opportunity. They knew they were going to be a younger team. They were going to have to battle these ebbs and flows of a season and dealing with youth. And this is part of what happens. You have those games where you go to Notre Dame and the team doesn't show up in the manner that you were expecting. However, they've responded very well here this evening. And again, these are two programs that in the last 11 years have won national championships. The expectations are to win and win at a very high level. There's Coach Bennett in his 15th year. In this particular matchup between these two schools, UVA has 
dominated in recent years, having won the last seven times. And during Coach Bennett's tenure, he's 17-2 and two against Louisville. Yeah, they have had Louisville's number during that stretch. Even when the great Rick Pitino was coaching at Louisville, Virginia was still able to win that matchup. Beekman up against the shot clock, had to shoot it. Leon Bond pulls down the offensive rebound. This is Elijah Gertrude. See Louisville going to the zone on this possession. More difficult to come up with those defensive rebounds. As we get the second offensive rebound opportunity for Leon Bond. They're going to stop that. The shot clock did not reset. I mean, did reset. And it should not have hit, whether it hit the rim or not. Oh, I thought it hit the rim. I thought it was a good reset back to 20. They're going to figure it out now. We'll take a break here on the grounds. The second ever ACC player to have a triple-double in their first game, along with Dennis Scott. And we come back, and that was actually not a shot clock reset, so the officials went over and cleared it. Only two seconds for Virginia coming in and turning it over on the inbounds play. Tyler Johnson's pass goes out of bounds off the hands of Caleb Glenn. Tomorrow's Pac-12 basketball game on ESPN of the app. Caleb Love and number 10 Arizona look to bounce back from their New Year's Eve upset loss to Stanford against K.J. Simpson and 11-2 Colorado at 9.30 Eastern, 6.30 Pacific from the McHale Center in Tucson. The Buffs sit atop the Pac-12 and have won six in a row. And, Corey, you have seen the Buffs firsthand turn Miami over 20 times in a game. Yeah, that was a uh, impressive performance by the Buffaloes, and they did that without their star freshman Cody Williams, who still hasn't made his return to the lineup. But Arizona has been one of the best teams in the country this year, and you mentioned Caleb Love playing great basketball. Andrew Rohde around and out. Good look for Rohde. on that was already knocked down one three shooting it with confidence and that's the one thing if you're Tony Bennett you want to see Sky Clark's miss is grabbed by Ryan Dunn it's one thing for certain every time Scott Clark shoots it it's going to be with confidence he doesn't care at all about a miss before he's going to let the next one go inside the Dunn ball knocks out of bounds along the baseline and it'll stay at this end yeah, Sky Clark had a chance to meet him before the game today and uh, asked him why he wears the number 55. You know why, don't you? Uh, I do not. His guy, Jay White Will? Chocolate. Yeah, Jay Will. So apparently he knows him because his dad knew him in Central Florida, got to meet him, but obviously Sky's not old enough to have watched Jason Williams play in real time, but with video, you can go back and watch anything, of course. And that is his guy. And you, so you, when you talk about him playing with confidence, Jason Williams, White Chocolate, certainly played with confidence. I played against Jason Williams many, many a times. I absolutely saw it firsthand. It was unbelievable to see a lot of things that he would do in the game that many of us would only do in pickup games. <laughs> there goes Scott Clark traveling. I asked him if there was a significance to his first name having two Ys at the end of it. He said, no, it's just what mom went with. But it's uh, SKYY, Sky Clark, hometown of Los Angeles, family moved to Tennessee when he was an 11th grader in high school, then to Atlanta, where they are now. And after spending his freshman year, or part of his freshman year at the University of Illinois, has found a home at the University of Louisville. But Sky's really like a, a first year this year. He only played seven games at Illinois last season, so when you're talking about the youth of this team, as Isaac McNeely lines up the three and is able to knock it down, you know, both of these teams are relatively young. You, you remove Reese Beekman from the lineup and Jacob Groves. This is a very young Virginia team. You're talking about a bunch of first and second year guys playing significant minutes. And the same is the case for the Cards. Their sophomores are transferred. Zan Payne has come into the game, the son of Kenny. Again, Louisville playing with only seven scholarship players tonight because of injury. The pass was kicked by Clark, so UVA will keep it. And you do know why it's Zan Payne, correct? Alexander. There you go. Just making sure you know. There is Zan talking to his dad on the way out. Gave his dad a few seconds, few good seconds, I'd like to think. 
Zan is a second year grad transfer after spending four years at Kentucky. The town where he grew up. Of course, Kenny Payne spent 10 years as the top assistant coach for John Calipari. Done off the sweet lob pass from Beekman. And Virginia looking very well prepared for the zone. We've seen Louisville mix up their zone between a 2-3 and a 1-3-1. That time in a 1-3-1 zone. With the screen and roll action, no one to defend Reese Beekman from getting into the paint. Six different Cavaliers have scored, including all five starters now. Huntley Hatfield shaping up, gets double team, skips to the corner. James rising up for three. Rolls with another physical rebound, and Huntley Hatfield is down holding his left hip. And there is number five walking his way back down to the other end of the court, but his left hip is what he landed on there. Yeah, and you can only imagine right now Kenny Payne coming into this game with only seven available scholarship players, and the last thing they can afford is have the injury to Brandon Huntley Hatfield, who has been their star over the last three games. Yeah, Dennis Evans, the seven-footer, did not make the trip. Still recovering from a shoulder injury. That's a nice pass. Sure is. You've got to make that one. <laughs> when Brody throws a pass like that, that's one you've got to be able to drop that down. Clark. Another offensive rebound in the stick pass by Donalo Yovanovich. That snapped a four-minute scoreless drought and has the Cardinals back within five. Tony Bennett talked to us pregame about how teams are starting to zone up more. So you can see Virginia's put a lot of work into their zone offense. And Ryan Dunn knowing exactly where to go on that possession, finding Rody in the corner, knocked down his second three of the evening. In and out they go from the nail to the corner, found the open man. It's an eight-point UVA lead. Clark back to Yovanovic, wide open. The southpaw leaves it short. Done with another rebound. He's 10th in the league in that category. Beekman drawing a crowd defensively, finds Groves. Rody on the putback. UVA with its largest lead up by 10. Great recognition by Ryan Dunn seeing Huntley Hatfield go over as a shot blocker, knowing that if he doesn't get the basketball, it's going to be an offensive rebound opportunity. McNeely whistled for the foul. Virginia operating on all cylinders early offensively. Ryan Dunn finds Andrew Rohde in the corner, is able to knock down the three ball, and then it's Rohde going off the glass, unable to finish, but Ryan Dunn there to finish it up to help out a teammate. Notre Dame. Virginia made only two three-point shots all game, two for 11. Corey, they've already doubled their makes here tonight. A great start, home sweet home. Virginia getting back on the home floor and shooting the basketball extremely well. 40% to start the game, four of 10. And as the cards have zoned Virginia, they've had zone busters to start this one. Isaac McNeely with the three. And of course, Andrew Rohde with two threes already here in this first half. Well, McNeely is the guy, fourth in the country coming in at 48%. And he was number one on the scouting report for Louisville defensively. And when he gets that kind of attention, Virginia needs the other guys to make open shots. And you consider the fact that McNeely is only five of his last 20 from three. Imagine how high he was on that chart. Had identical 22-point, 8-for-11 field goal, 6-for-8 three-point games. Back-to-back -back against Syracuse and North Carolina Central. Since then, has not scored in double figures. So good sign to see him going early. Tyler Johnson has his first two. The freshman from Brooklyn snaps a 10-2 Virginia run. And Tyler Johnson has, has settled this Louisville team. He started the season coming off the bench with Sky Clark at the point guard position. But since he got into the starting lineup and became the primary ball handler, he's been a guy that settled him down offensively. Buchanan left his feet. Virginia fortunate to keep it. Brody with the miss, long rebound grabbed by Groves. Groves has been great on the glass throughout this game already, both offensively and defensively. We see Groves and Buchanan on the floor together. It's not a combination you see often for Virginia.
Well, what has having Tyler Johnson in the starting lineup at the point done for Sky Clark? It's given him opportunity to be able to get off the basketball and find shots. Sky Clark went two consecutive games where he had zero assists and nine turnovers. And so it's helped Louisville as a team to calm down the turnovers, but also be able to free up their best shooter. Buchanan had it knocked out of bounds. Virginia will keep it. What a women's college basketball triple header we have for you Sunday afternoon. It all starts at 1 Eastern on ESPN with number one South Carolina hosting Mississippi State. Then Angel Reese and number seven LSU take on Ole Miss. And we cap the afternoon on ESPN 2 with North Carolina and number 16 Notre Dame in South Bend. And you see the Caitlin Clark effect all the way here in Charlottesville. Did you see the step back from mm. the beak of the Hawkeye last night? Everybody in the building knows she's going to get the shot. She gets the ball, has a step back from what's that, 30 feet, uh, 35 I'm feet? Going at least 35. Wow. Five fifteen remaining first half here at John Paul Jones Arena with Virginia alumnus Corey Alexander. I'm Doug Sherman. An hour before tip-off, Tony Bennett said that uh, the one thing they're most working on offensively, and really at both ends of the floor, getting good shots and not allowing good shots. Through the first 15 minutes, what have you seen in that regard, Corey, as they allow a slam dunk along the baseline by Mike James? But that was a, even though Mike James got the dunk, it was a contested dunk. So you want to see your guys in there. I think Virginia's done a great job early in this game of getting good looks on the offensive end of the floor. So good, and there's another one. As Ryan Dunn gets an opportunity to get downhill, they have taken Kenny Payne and the cards out of the zone because they've been so good shooting the basketball as we see a nice interior passing from Huntley Hatfield to Mike James cutting across the baseline was able to finish it over two defenders. Tell you what, it's nice to see Mike James healthy after the Achilles tear and then also a hamstring injury last year. He was not 100% at all last season following his medical redshirt year. He's lost some weight. He just looks so much better this year. It really does. And I've had a chance to talk to his high school coach, Steve Reese, who's my guy. Coach of the Florida Rebels, or the Nike EYBL. And Reese has talked about how much Mike James loves playing for Kenny Payne and is excited about what this program is going to be moving forward. And knowing that he has a lot of responsibility in doing that to make sure these guys go out and compete each and every day. Out of Oak Ridge in Orlando. And Mike James is really kind of the de facto captain. This year so far, Kenny Payne has not named captains, but he told me this morning he does plan to name at least one captain. But he said he thought he made a mistake last year naming guys before they had earned it. So he wanted to hold that until later in the season, and that is still to come. But do you have info that it's going to be Mike James? No, but he was clear about saying at this point, that man has been our number one leader. Well, right now he has got back-to-back -back buckets for the cards. And he is competing, and that's the one thing that Kenny Payne wants to see out of this team, regardless of how many guys they have available. If you step on this floor, then you compete to try to win a game. He leads Louisville now with eight points, has L back to within six. Rose feeds the post, Beekman. Always looking for a cutting teammate, and that leads to a foul against Buchanan. Mike James starting to get it going. Going one-on-one -on -one against one of the best perimeter defenders in the game and is able to finish it off the glass. Tax Act doesn't sponsor any cool. No, Coach, I wouldn't get frustrated. You know what I would do. I would just shoot it and say, hey, if you're open, then that means if I miss, there's no reason you shouldn't get an offensive rebound. You only get a couple of chances when you're the guard going in there, dropping it off to the big. you got to finish those. Otherwise, you're not getting the next one. And, Coach, you knew the answer to that question. Ryan Dunn with a chance for three. But that's the way you finish. Ryan Dunn got his number called on the underneath out-of-bounds play, giving him a chance to go one-on-one -on -one against Brandon Huntley Hatfield, who they feel he has an advantage against off the bounce. Ryan Dunn paying it off for his coaches, drawing it up, calling his number. Dunn is a perfect four for four from the floor so far tonight. Three rebounds. His first miss comes from the free throw line. How would you rate the progression on offense you have seen out of Ryan Dunn as a second year? I believe that I would give it, I mean, are we, am I grading it? What am I giving it a number? I and mean, you ask how am I rating it, what are we doing? Well, let's do A, B, C, D, F okay. with the pluses and minuses. Uh, that's not good. Oh. 
Just a collective gasp in this building anytime you see Reese Beekman go down. Keep an eye on that to make sure that he's not going to be ginger on the ankle, leg, whatever it may be he's got going on right now. You know, that's kind of what hampered Virginia's season last year. Virginia was playing great basketball until Reese Beekman got injured. Yep in the Michigan game where he had 15 first half points and it really threw the who's off for the majority of the season until they were able to get it back going late in the year. Well, there's that defense for Virginia to force the air ball by Williams. Tenth forced shot clock violation this year. Coming up tonight at 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific over on ESPN. We'll have another NBA matchup for you. The Heat and the Lakers square off at Crypto.com Arena. Lakers on a home stand. Got to get things going. The inaugural NBA in-season tournament champions have struggled 3-8 and eight since they hoist the trophy in Vegas. Do you think they expended too much energy for that and they are now paying for it? I do not. Uh, I believe that anytime you have an opportunity to win a trophy, you go after it with everything that you have. And I believe they did a great job of doing that. And the NBA season is a very long season. You got to go back and look at the three and eight record. The majority of that was on the road. So that's why you think they've lost eight of their last eleven. Yes, I do believe More that's so the case. More so the schedule than anything else. I believe that's the case. I believe that's why Virginia's been. lost a couple of their last games because they've been on the road. Because in this building. <laughs> Makes a difference. They are a different team. And this guy is a different player this year. Reese Beekman getting downhill, understanding the time to score, the time to pass, the time to facilitate. But at all times, he's been a leader for the Hoop. No doubt. As always, good with the basketball. 3.1 assist to turnover ratio. Always among the best in the league at that rate. First in the league in steals per game, first in assists per game to go along with 13 points every time out. Reese Beekman only has 23 turnovers on this season. Wow. Ten of those came in those two road games we're talking about at Memphis, at Notre Dame. That's ten of his 23 turnovers on the year simply because they put so much pressure on him to do everything and make some, you know, to take him out of the game and make someone else have to make a play. Right, that number is even more impressive because of his usage rate. James apparently beat the three-point shot clock buzzer. And we've got a held ball. And the possession arrow belongs to Virginia. Beekman, Rhodey, Buchanan, Dunn and Groves, the five... Wahoo's on the floor for Virginia. Williams goes out for Louisville. Yovanovich back in. Sky Clark, Mike James, Tyler Johnson, and the freshman Caleb Glenn, native son from right there in Louisville, back on the floor. Beekman for three. Yes! UVA's fifth made three of the night, now five of 12. And this is what Reese Beekman does best, getting his team out in transition off of defense, the beautiful five to Ryan Dunn. These two guys together are a menace, both defensively and turning defense into offense. Well, it's a different night. They're not in South Bend, Indiana anymore. This is Charlottesville, Virginia. At Granger, we know dealing with the unexpected is part of your job description. And you made a promise to keep the line running, to power through the downpour, to be the one who always gets it done. And our promise is to help you do it with professional grade supplies for every industry, plus same day pickup and next day delivery on most orders. Because you can't predict the future, but with the right partner, you can be prepared for it. Call, clickgranger.com, or just stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. Virginia with a 9-0 run 
to take this 15 point lead. And they have had their best player in the midst of all of it. Reese Beekman knocking down the three. And this is all after he goes to the bucket and gets a three point play. Off the steal, he gets out in transition, finds Ryan Dunn, who's able to finish it off. And excitement is back in the building, especially when you see these two guys get together and piling up stocks. You know what stocks are by now, right? I do. Okay. You talk about it every time we do a Virginia game, and I think this is our third game together. Steals and blocks combined, and uh, those two guys are very good at both. This Virginia defense has been very good so far tonight. Jovanovic now with 22 points for Louisville. That matches the lowest points allowed this year and a half by Virginia. Can Beekman get off a shot? He's fouled before the shot. Louisville with a foul to give. Actually, several fouls to give, and so that was a smart foul to get him before he got to the basket. Absolutely was, and Kenny Payne now going to get Sky Clark out of the game. Well, forgive me, get Ivanovich out of the game to get another defender on the floor. Hersey Miller, junior from Los Angeles, has come in. We'll step away with a timeout on the floor here at John Paul Jones Arena. Two stories were made as unbeatens collide for the title. The Wolverines are looking to finish the mission while the Huskies hope to write their perfect ending. The final chapter to crown a new playoff champion. Number one, Michigan. Number two, Washington. May the best story win. All right, Corey, if you're Louisville, do you just keep fouling here? Uh, if you find yourself in a position to where you can do it before Virginia gets a good look at a shot, you do. But you also don't have many guys on the floor with many guys available. So you don't want to get yourself in foul trouble. 3.9. Tony Bennett calling the timeout, trying to draw up his action. You may want to take one on the catch here. Beekman with the responsibility. Gets it into McNeely. Miller all over him. It doesn't matter. Isaac McNeely among the best three-point shooters in the country makes it a 16-point half. Transfers and Groves and Rody playing at a higher level than they've ever had to play before. And again, these guys have battled with their confidence. Corner three by Mike James is off the mark. That Virginia defense continues to clamp down. That is now nine consecutive misses for Louisville. Only two made field goals for the Cardinals in the final five minutes of the first half. And this Virginia defense has been good all night long. And offensively, Dunn and Beekman have led the way. They've combined for 19 of the 37 Virginia points. And I feel like if those two guys give them that sort of offensive production and the defense is the UVA defense, there's pretty high ceiling for this team. I believe Reese and Ryan will always give them that type of production. The difference is going to be can they get others to step up? Can Rody make shots? Can McNeely get his looks and be effective? And that's going to be the difference for this Virginia team all season long. I believe they can get a consistent effort from Ryan Dunn and Reese Beekman. Those two guys are good enough to be able to do that on a nightly basis. The question is, are the guys around them able to do it? That was the sixth turnover on Louisville tonight. Meanwhile, Virginia has only one turnover. They turned it over 11 times last time against Notre Dame. That's one of the numbers that is usually very, very good in the favor of the Hoops. Yeah, Virginia elite only turning the basketball over 8.8 .8 times a game, which is good for third nationally. And on pace to be under that here tonight. Beekman steps into a three, missed it off to the right. Huntley Hatfield on the rebound. Here comes Louisville. Once again, Donalo Jovanovic making his first career start for Louisville tonight as James draws the foul and will head to the line to shoot a pair. Third foul on McNeely. Well, coming up, Colorado and Arizona, the 10th-ranked Wildcats on Thursday, a featured game. 
9.30 Eastern time on ESPN in this last go-round for the Pac-12 Conference as we've known. Tell you what, it's been a positive go-round for the Pac-12 in football, however. Wow. Washington playing in the national championship game against the University of Michigan. I tell you what, I was not in favor of Florida State not getting in. However, we had two great games in the college football semifinals. I'm not going to say the committee was right, but I can't say that they were wrong. Either. Well, we may never really have a good answer to it because of so many guys for the Knowles sitting out. As you and I talked about last week, the idea was going into that game, they'd have an opportunity to beat the two-time defending national champs and lay claim to what they think would be a share of a national championship, even though officially it wouldn't have been that. But uh, when you don't play a third of your roster, it's kind of hard to beat the two-time defending national champs. I agree with Kirby Smart. Something has to be done regarding the opt-outs, the transfer deadlines, everything that goes into that. Or they're going to have to try to find a way to get this done earlier. Now with the college football playoff expanding to 12 teams, that's going to be difficult to do. But it's something that has to be addressed with college football. You need to have your guys making the bowl games of some type of importance. They moved the basketball very well and get a three-point opportunity from the big man. And you have nice ball movement and playmaking from Mike James, who's able to manipulate the screen and roll. And find Huntley Hatfield in a position to where he can just go up and score right over top of Grove. And right now, Louisville with a little bit of energy to start this second half. Virginia has yet to score. And now the Cards with an opportunity to have the four points here in the second stand. Well, Brandon Huntley Hatfield said, I trusted that KP, Kenny Payne, knew what I wanted, and he devoted himself to helping rescue my family. Such a big part of the reason why Kenny Payne was put in place at his alma mater. And he and BHH have that kind of relationship. And Kenny Payne has that type of relationship with pretty much every player that he's ever coached. I actually sat with Kenny in Dallas with Julius Randle's mom, Carolyn, who just flat out loves Kenny Payne. And that's what Kenny Payne did for Julius Randle. He helped him rescue his family. Julius Randle signed a deal for over $100 million because of the work that he put in coming with John Calipari and Kenny Payne at Kentucky. And that, that's the reason why Kenny Payne is a connector. He's a networking guy. He understands his great relationships. He's got so many great relationships throughout this game. But most importantly, these young men who play for him love and respect him. He signed a very good class, five members of the 2023 ESPN 100. But going forward with the questions around his job security, to try and recruit going forward, it's a lot more difficult. But you have to consider the fact that Kenny Payne took this job not even understanding what Louisville was going to get as far as probation, whatever it may be, is you can see the emphasis is to try to get the ball inside to Huntley Hatfield. We talked about Virginia doesn't foul much as a team. Buchanan picks up the foul there. But Kenny Payne took over a program that was in, you know, rough shape. I mean, to, to be honest, it was in terrible shape. And again, trying to fix this program is not something that's going to happen in two years. If you had those type of expectations, that's wrong for you having those expectations. Reese Beekman gives to Rody. You can into the cutting dunk. And the one-handed hammer gives Virginia. 41-26 lead. You know what we're seeing right now is Ryan Dunn with the ability to play the three. Tony Bennett has Buchanan and Groves on the floor together, which puts Ryan Dunn on the perimeter. And of course, when you get Ryan Dunn cutting to the basket with a free run, you're going to find yourself in a highlight. We may see that on Sports Center tonight. go with the low-hanging fruit and say Tom Brady. No, I know it wasn't Brady. He was a backup to uh, Brian Greasy. Oh, uh, Greasy. Okay, okay, okay. Get that. So that's coming up Monday night. And I wonder also, is it going to be Jim Harbaugh's last game as Wolverines head coach? Is he off to the NFL?
if I'm Jim Harbaugh, I'm absolutely gone to the NFL. Forget this college football stuff <laughs> and all the politics and everything that are involved. Buchanan was blocked by the point guard, Johnson. Entry pass. And that takes us to our first media time out of the second half. Who's up 15 here in Charlottesville? Whoa. He certainly had all of the requisites to get this job as one of their own and now trying to make it come to fruition as head coach of the Cardinals. It, you and I worked together, you know, during the Chris Mack, Mike Pegeese year. And when Chris Mack stepped away, Mike Pegeese took over. I said on air then, I know who the guy is, but the timing was not right. When, the, if, if when all is said and done, if Mike Pegeese had coached Louisville the following season, they would have kept a number of their transfers, their players. They would have been able to go in and find out exactly what the ramifications of probation would be, et cetera, et cetera. Then if you go get Kenny Payne now, he's coming into a program that is going to be a lot easier to rebuild. Of course, you want to get your guy when you get your guy, and they got him. But this same man that was celebrated for coming back and getting his degree in 2003 is being much maligned right now by his, you know, the faithful at the University of Louisville. And again, he took over a very difficult place and is trying to get it back together. Beautiful find from Tane Murray off the back cut. You see the difference in when you have Ryan Dunn cutting to the basket, making himself available and put himself in a scoring position as he did on the last possession where he got the dunk. Well, Corey, last two games, the man at the free throw line is 12 of 16 from the floor. And you would find it hard to believe that anything positive came out of the Notre Dame game. However, when you look back at the way that Ryan Dunn is playing offensively and how well he's shooting the basketball, that was the one positive. He was the, he and Reese Beekman were the only two guys in double figures in that game for Virginia. Forty-two twenty-eight. Brandon Huntley Hatfield now with seven points. Again, he's coming off of three straight double doubles for Louisville. Beekman from the post, and Dunn is fouled by James. Well, Ryan Dunn continues to me to be a fascinating player for Virginia. The upside seems limitless. And if and when it comes together, I mean, the defense is without question. If the offense catches up to the defense, how good can he be? I mean, he can absolutely be an NBA player. I mean, I think that's without question. But it's all going to boil down to how well he shoots the basketball from the perimeter. You think about, you know, the NBA line is another two feet behind the college basketball line. And that's the one area where Ryan hasn't truly shown that he can do on a consistent basis. I think as he adds that to his game, he becomes even more dangerous. Well, he's only four for 21 this year, but I've said on the air before, to me, his shot doesn't look broken. It's not broken. That's far from broken. And he, you've actually been here with me when he's knocked down two in the game. And so two of those four on the season, he shot right in front of us. So when you think about it, we know that he can make shots. But I don't know if he's had the, he has the confidence to be able to take those shots on a regular basis. Well, he works on it more often than not when you come to work a Virginia game and go to a practice go to a shoot around Ryan Dunn is out there working on many things including his three point shooting and that's the biggest concern he will work and if you can find a guy that will work with his athleticism and his natural ability that's the guy I'm taking my chances with and the ball comes to him the 10th leading rebounder in the ACC has another that is his seventh tonight Nifty shot by Tane Murray, the third year from Auckland, New Zealand. And Tane Murray's given Virginia good minutes tonight as well. Knocked down a three in the first half, now going off the bounce. Not something you see often from Tane Murray, but that's one of the things for Virginia. They're going to have to have more guys that can make plays, especially without Reese Beekman having to create all the offense for the entire team. Williams silences the crowd. He's had a couple of air balls, and the fans have been letting him hear it. 
after having missed a dozen three-point shots in a row, Williams finally able to find the range for the Cardinals. And this is a 13-point game. I mean, Virginia has a little separation, but not really trying, been able to separate themselves and just run the cards out of the building. Tane Murray, of course, respected as a shooter, gets a lane and is able to get to the basket going reverse layup and able to finish. But you look at this Virginia lineup, Tane Murray's a guy that can also provide shooting for Virginia, but someone else that Reese Beekman has to be able to create opportunities for. And now you look at the lineup, no point guard on the floor, McNeely taking over. So we'll have to see how Virginia operates with Beekman on the bench. Well, it's going to be down to Dunn. The turnaround from the baseline goes just before the horn sounded. Well, we haven't mentioned the fact that Dante Harris continues to be sidelined with an ankle injury. And there still is no definitive timeline for his return. And that is an important piece for Virginia. When you think about the way that Tony Bennett has had success throughout his tenure, especially over the last 10 seasons with Virginia, it's always been multiple ball handlers on the floor. You go back to the national championship, it's Kia Clark and Ty Jerome. You go back before that, you've got Malcolm Brogdon and London Parentes. It's always Devin Hall in the mix. So many different guys who handle the basketball for Virginia. And right now, Virginia has been faced with playing with really one ball handler in Reese Beekman simply because of the injury to Dante Harris. Off the inbound. Clean look, misfired by Williams. Another offensive rebound for the Cardinals. Glenn draws the contact. Rebound McNeely. Well, Ryan Dunn has matched his career high with 15 points. Tane Murray getting to the basket again. Tane Murray showing Tony Bennett, I need more minutes, coach, going off the bounce, getting to the rim the second time we've seen him attack the basket and finish. That's Ryan Dunn. That's why he's so spectacular. Because he can guard his yard and then block the shot. Johnson to the rim and beats the buzzer. Tony Bennett so frustrated on the Virginia bench. They defended for 29 seconds and then still gave up a layup. While I'm over here celebrating Ryan Dunn defensive. Well, you thought he was going to get the ball and go the I other did. way. I mean, again, you know, normally he comes up with those. But again, it may have been asking a little too much for all he'd already done. McNeely. First, Virginia made three in the second half, their fifth of the game. Rose fell. Huntley Hatfield left all alone. There's another rebound for Dunn, and he's fouled by Jovanovic. That'll send us to break. It's been the second year class of Virginia taking over. Ryan Dunn is the shot clock going down. The fadeaway, nothing but net. And then Isaac McNeely. From way downtown, yes, right. Bang. Looks like you won something there. With an impressive 20 point win last night over Syracuse, the Orange able to hang for 25 minutes, but then the Blue Devils in the second half, eight for eight from beyond the three point line. And with Tyrese Proctor back, who to me is the best player in the league. They Wait, continue. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I didn't say he's the player of the year. Oh, whoa, whoa. He's the best player in the league? Yeah. Tyrese Proctor? Yeah. <laughs> With him back in the fold, Duke looked really good. Okay. I'm still trying to get over you thinking that Tyrese. I, I love Tyrese Proctor. I couldn't tell the that. Best player in the league? <laughs> do, do you realize how well R.J. Davis in in? P.J. Hall are playing? Yes. Those two are the leaders for player of the year in the ACC. But best player? So, I would take so Kyle Filipowski, his teammate, is, is not as good a player? You're making it out that I'm saying bad things about other people. I'm trying no. to say good things about Proctor. 
Oh, no, I, I'm not diminishing that. anybody else okay. as far as I'm concerned. I will uh, agree to disagree with you on the, okay. on the Proctor prognosis. That's okay. <laughs> I'm going to be watching. I would be interested to have a list of guys that... I can tell you two guys right now, I think, that are on Virginia's team, I think, that are better than Tyrese Parker. <laughs> Okay. You want to guess those two guys? Oh, uh, I, I wouldn't need three guesses. I would get it in one and two. McNeely with another triple. He's got 11. Under nine minutes to go. Virginia has been comfortably in front since midway through the first half. The Hoos have been shooting it better now, 7 of 19. This is their largest lead of the night so far. James, the extra pass to Williams. They give Williams a lot of credit, sticking with it. As you mentioned, shot a couple air balls early, but it hasn't deterred him from taking the next shot. And again, as a shooter, you have to have a short memory. Reese Beekman continues to get rest. Tony Bennett putting the ball in the hands of Andrew Rohde to run the offense. Tane Murray also gets some extended minutes. Rose will head to the free throw line. The ball movement for Virginia has been excellent all night. Bond out of the double team, finds McNeely, and those are the right hands to get it to as he's knocking down another three. Look at the numbers for Virginia. Saturday, 2 of 11 from 3. And throughout this one, 7th made 3-point field goals in this game. And you look at the number, I mean, taking a lot more threes. A lot of that has to do with Louisville coming in and playing the zone. But once you start getting a couple to go, you feel better about things. All right, 7 for 20. What is it? Quick math. Oh, my goodness. You had to look to the sky. It's 35%. 35. 35%, yes. All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you for New House at Syracuse. I you guys do no math exactly. there, correct? Okay. It's a communication. There story. you go. Just making sure. Yeah. All right. Rose makes the first. And you mentioned Rody getting extended run at the point. You know, he played point guard some last year at St. Thomas. So, you know, he's a 6 6 wing, but it's not completely foreign territory to him. by McNeely. James. That's a two-point shot. Mike James continues to have some success offensively. He scored 24 points against Virginia here last year in his redshirt freshman year. So whenever you have a big game against a team, you come in to play against them the next time with confidence. Perfect swish off the fingers of Jake Groves. Groves has been Spectacular on the glass throughout this game, both offensive boards and defensive boards, but continues to show that shooting touch. One of the few guys that Tony Bennett's been able to rely on consistently from beyond the arc. Yeah, McNeely came in at 48% of the year, but Groves not far behind at 46. So his three makes it a 19-point Virginia lead as we head to break. And it continues to be great ball movement for the Hoos here at home at JPJ. The nice find to Groves in the corner and we'll say he's grooving it. Back at JPJ, Virginia has been in control throughout over Louisville. 59-40, your score. We've talked about it at both ends. The things that Tony Bennett wanted to see tonight and going forward, get good shots, not allow good shots. And Virginia with only two turnovers has gotten great shots throughout this game. Initially against the zone and then after that a lot of Ryan Dunn attacking the paint and on his way to a career high and still continues to do the job defensively. Another block for Dunn. That is his second tonight. The only two for Virginia in the score sheet. 
Dunn, Groves, Rohde, McNeely, Beekman back on the floor with under seven minutes to play in regulation. McNeely off the bounce. Boy, if he can continue to do that in addition to knocking down the three, he is a really tough guard. But you see the difference in confidence for McNeely, for Groves, for Rohde here at JPJ in comparison to when you watch them playing on the road. And that's the th really going to be the challenge for Tony Bennett and his staff throughout this season is how do you get this level of aggression when you get away from this home crowd? How pervasive is that and how do you correct it? You can't correct it. It's about mentality. And the thing is, like for Virginia, I was a guy that loved to go win on the road. Ty Jerome is a guy that loved to go win on the road. Kyle Guy is a guy that loved to win on the road. You want to go in and hush the other team's crowd. I'm not sure outside of Reese Beekman and Ryan Dunn who those guys are that go out and do that on the road. But we know that McNeely can get them on their feet here at JPJ. Well, he has refound his stroke tonight. He was so good first 10 games, making 55%. Previous three before tonight, he got a little sideways, but no trouble tonight with the 16 points in counting. Lefty layup by Curtis Williams. So the challenge for Virginia, we saw it on one of our promos. Next up for them, they go to NC State, where Kevin Keats is going to pressure significantly, understanding that that is the, what has caused Virginia problems throughout their losses this year. And so it's going to be important for guys like McNeely and Rhodey to be able to handle that pressure and still make shots. Well, Williams has overcome his slow start. Three threes here in the second half after a couple of air balls. How you start, how you finish. You always like to see a young man respond that way when he doesn't have success early. So stick with it. Keep it going. And he's another one of those top 100 recruits for Kenny Payne in this freshman class that's trying to build around. Louisville as a team has made its last four threes. McNeely with a little step back along the baseline. McNeely's feeling it right now. He's got it going. Everything that he is putting up is going down. And it's affected the way that he's defending as well. The former Polka Dot. You love saying that. Now with 18 points. <laughs> Shout out to my guy Charles Rockin, the also Polka Dot from okay. West Virginia, who was the only person that knew your reference. <laughs> As this Polka Dot, Isaac McNeely has gotten busy here, especially in the second half, continues to run the numbers up and now gets a break. And if you're McNeely, you're this hot. I'm thinking, hey, Coach, 440, that's a little too uh, too early for me to come out. I got it going right now. And now do you think when McNeely gets back in the uh, locker room, he checks the Miami box score to see how Wooga Poplar is shooting tonight? Because they are neck and neck for best three-point shooting percentage in the league. I'm going to go with no. That's not going to happen. The beautiful five from Reese Beekman on the back door to Tane Murray. No. I was here for Tane Murray's career high. He had 14 points against Iowa, but he did his damage from beyond the three-point arc. I would have to say this is definitely a career high points in the paint for Tane Murray throughout this game. I've seen him score three baskets in the paint. Yep. I can't say that I've ever seen that from him in a Virginia game before. And nine points. Made a three to start, but then, uh, as Corey said, got into the basket three times in a row. Louisville in transition, and Rohde called for the foul. Final 349 ahead as the Hoos look to improve their league record to two and one. Paul Jones Arena without the students who are still on break. Still a terrific environment tonight for the Cavaliers who have been leading pretty much throughout. Louisville had a brief lead early on but the cards have not been able to hang. And among the calling cards for Virginia is that they defend you and do it without fouling and sending the opponent to the line. Yeah, Virginia eighth nationally, fouling only 13 times a game. And so Louisville coming in, one of the top free throw attempts team in the country, normally getting them close to 26 free throw attempts. And that has been a struggle for them to get to the line tonight to give Virginia a lot of credit for defending without fouling. This is Tyler Johnson, the freshman out of our Savior Lutheran in New York City. Tyler had a nice homecoming 
He did. And, and when he went back, played in the Garden. November 19th against Texas, a game that Louisville should have won. Yeah. It makes you wonder how that loss changed the trajectory of this season. You know, I, I said the same thing. I was actually in studio that night watching the game. And nothing against Texas, but rooting for the cards. And that was the thing. And I, I was putting myself in Kenny Payne's shoes right there and where many people were talking about, wow, the great effort from Louisville based upon what had happened with them the season before, only winning four games. Kenny Payne was not thinking more victory. He's thinking exactly what you thought. What that win, if they would have gotten it, would have done for the confidence of his players. And that was, they probably would find themselves in a completely different scenario right now. Now, one thing we have to make sure that we, J.J. Trainer's not playing. Trey White's not here. I mean, he's not playing. Louisville is dealing with a number of injuries to very valuable core players in their rotation. So that cannot be understated. We talked about, you know, Dante Harris missing for Virginia. When you're doing that without two and three of your guys who are in your rotation, it makes it extremely difficult. Brandon Huntley Hatfield makes just his second three of the season. That's actually Williams who knocked that one down off the pass from Huntley Hatfield. Double team. And he's handled the basketball extremely well once he's gotten trapped down in the corner. Under three minutes to go. Elijah Gertrude back into the game for Virginia, number 12 in white. Tane Murray having a night. Tane Murray is earning playing time right now. And, you know, one of the things we've seen from Tony Bennett going with the lineup with both Buchanan and Groves on the floor together has opened up opportunities for other guys. And Reese Beekman doing what he does best, driving and kicking, finding Tane Murray in the corner who knocks down his second three-pointer of the evening. Fourth time this year, Virginia's made 10 threes in a single game. Now 10 for 23 tonight, including those two by Murray, who's up to 12 points off the bench. Let me see. Those games would be Texas A&M, Syracuse, North Carolina Central, and tonight. Is that right? I don't know. <laughs> Let's see. You're the UVA guy. Yeah, but, but you have you, all these stats committed to memory. But, I don't. When you, but when you throw out something like that, I'm expecting for you to already know those games. <laughs> It was our wonderful statistician, Richard Simmons, who just handed me that sheet and tried to make me sound smart. You know and what? I did until you, you just pulled what? the rug out from underneath Richard, Richard knows you need help. <laughs> he understands. <laughs> <laughs> now, being that we're talking about you sounding smart, uh -oh. I need for you to clarify your, your Tyrese Proctor statement where you said that he has the highest ceiling. Yes. Okay. Please, please tell That is absolutely my thought okay. when I said what I said. Okay. All right. Because when you say best player, I'm thinking the guy who is this moment at this moment. Yeah. You, you feel as though he has the highest ceiling moving yes, forward. Yes, that is how I should have said it. Okay. And I still feel that way. Okay. And like I said, he is not a front runner for ACC Player of the Year or even first team all conference. But I do think he has the highest ceiling. Great job right there. Standing his ground by Blake Buchanan coming up with the block shot. And this is a game, I think, that gets some, some confidence going for Buchanan. Was able to get a bucket early, doing the job defensively, blocking a shot. In the small moments for a first year, for a freshman, to be able to come onto the floor. I mean, he had a huge game against Florida. We talked about that, the 18 points for him, but it's been a struggle for him ever since. In a game like this against an ACC opponent, is something that can boost your confidence, especially knowing that you're going to be in conference play for the next 17 games. Yeah, Buchanan, 6'11", 225, a lot of tools. Young man out of Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, averaging under four points per game. Now Jordan Miner is checked into the game, the 6'8 grad transfer from Merrimack. Gertrude off the feed from Murray. That's the guy I'm excited about, Elijah Gertrude. He is going to be really, really good. And again, the growing pains right now was supposed to have red-shirted this season. They pulled the red shirt off once the injury to Dante Harris happened. And Tony Bennett uncertain as to how long Harris was going to be out. Realized that they were probably going to need Gertrude.
got a look on the 6'4 freshman from Jersey City, New Jersey. Went to Hudson Catholic High School. Play for my guy, Nick Marinello. But now I'll tell you the other Dougie Fresh. Okay. Doug Smith, number 11, who was my backcourt partner. He takes a lot of credit for Elijah Gertrude being here. Okay. Yeah. He's a, he's, a, he's a Jersey City guy. He's in Jersey City. We get a look at the numbers tonight. 10 of 24 for Virginia from beyond the three-point arc in comparison to 2 of 11. And I believe that's a game that the Hoos can put behind them at this point. We recognize having to go out on the road this Saturday. There's going to need to be a lot of improvement in the way they handle the basketball and handle pressure in comparison to what they saw at Memphis, where they did not handle that very well. Virginia was picked fourth in the preseason poll. A, did you think that was fair then? And B, do you think it's appropriate now? I think it's fair. It's appropriate. I'm not sure if they will be in that top four. When you think of top four in the ACC, you're talking about teams that get the first, the double buys in the ACC tournament. As we... And as you look at that, it's going to be important for Virginia to be able to win road games to do that. And I'm not sure that at this point they're prepared to do that. I think there are four other teams that may be a little more prepared to do it. I know Virginia will continue to hold serve here on their home court. Well, certainly at this point, you'd think Clemson, Duke, and Carolina have played the best. Maybe Wake Forest? Well, no. Again, although Miami has the two big losses, that is a team that is going to be dangerous when it's all said and done. And they get everyone healthy. Blake Buchanan with the layup. Shot clock is off and Louisville will dribble it out. And the folks still at John Paul Jones Arena rise to their feet and appreciate the effort tonight by the Wahoos. And give the fans a lot of credit. Made a lot of noise in the building without the students here. An opportunity for a few other people that don't normally get to sit in the student section to be able to hang around. Four players in.